presentation of CBC Sports. The sound of the Good Brothers inside the gardens with Pat Burns on the guitar. You know, it wasn't until 1951 you could play sports on a Sunday in Toronto, and sometime after that you were allowed to play on a Sunday night. But a huge gathering this Sunday evening at 62-year-old Maple Leaf Gardens, the Carlton Street cash box, as we welcome you inside. She opened her doors for playoff business for the first time in three years two nights ago. And this grand old lady with one of the most famous sheets of ice in the world welcomes 16,000 plus. She was built at the Depression for a million five. She could earn that Friday and tonight. Toronto versus Detroit, game four of the Norris Division semis on deck. The door to the Leaf locker room is closed as the players are alone with their thoughts. And the same holds true of the Detroit situation. There you see we'll have them arriving momentarily for game four here on Molson Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. Well, two nights ago it was game three, Detroit at Toronto, and it was a night of inquiry, Q&A, with Detroit posing the questions and Toronto providing the answers that night. We begin with the Maple Leaf captain. His role had come into question. Pearson to the line, Marinoff, no shot. Center, ready to be And they looked for the man who had been traded for the growing legend, Grant Fuhrer. What about Felix Potvin? With Grant Fuhrer gone, there were rising expectations. To the blue line for Coffey, closing in. Kick that rebound, kick that another save by Potvin. He made three. Three in a row by Felix Potvin. As Brian Murray saw Friday night, the Toronto Maple Leafs had all the answers. Now it's Sunday night, and Detroit must answer some questions. The Leafs get the victory. Stevie, why? Well, the Leafs got off to a pretty good start in that game. Obviously, uh, games one and two, we were able to get off to the good start and get an early lead. Uh, they're a good checking team. They showed that in game three when they had a 2-1 lead. I thought we came back in the game pretty hard, but uh, they played a patient game, and they waited and uh, got their break in the third on the power play to go up 3-1. Detroit's first loss in seven games. So, Mark, how do the Wings respond? Well, obviously we have to uh, play better in the first period than what we did in game three. And uh, uh, ideally teams, when you go on the road in the playoffs, uh, you, you like to win one out of two games. So we missed the opportunity in game three. And uh, we figure this, uh, this game is the most important game of the series by far right now. So there's the story on quiz number three. Tonight it's test number four. Detroit at Toronto, the Norris Division semifinals. At Maple Leaf Gardens. Good evening and welcome to Molson Hockey Night in Canada and the 1993 Stanley Cup playoffs on CBC Television. I'm Ron McLean. The Wings and the Leafs in a minute. Two teams that have scored well on the power play. Two teams that have done their job at home. But this is the first week of the Stanley Cup playoffs and already the teams that finished second and third overall in the regular season are gone. It happened to Boston last night at the auditorium in Buffalo. It happened to Chicago this afternoon. St. Louis wins it. Game four in overtime on Craig Janney's winner. Curtis Joseph of Richmond Hill, Ontario. Brilliant again. 29 saves. The Wings had the edge in shots in this series. The Hawks had the edge in theirs, but they're swept. Los Angeles won today against Calgary, so that series is squared at two. Warren Reichel with the winner. Rob Stauber in goal against Jeff Reese. And you may have heard Pittsburgh Penguins 14 game playoff winning streak, an NHL record. That was snapped by New Jersey this afternoon, 4 to 1. Claude Lemieux with a pair, and they'll play tomorrow later this evening. In fact, in about an hour, it's the Jets and the Canucks, and game four of their get together. Two significant lineup changes in the game tonight between Toronto and Detroit. Gerard Gallant's A OK to go again, so Grodnick is out. And Dave McElwain will play for Toronto from Seaforth, Ontario. He's in uniform because Ken Baumgartner is not. We're back inside Maple Leaf Gardens. It's dark because Pat Burns wants everything just as it was the other night. Up in the gondola tonight, Bob Cole and Harry Neal will provide the accounts of this game. And Harry, you're the teacher. You taught high school and university. You tell me what the keys were in game three. Well, I think it was very obvious, the quick start for the Leafs. 
They got two goals before Detroit got anyway. There's their record when they get off to that kind of a start. And when they get ahead, they can play their style, patient, conservative, and defensive decisions first. They also did a good job in the work department, making sure that they outwork the Red Wings. The Red Wings are faster and more skilled, but any team runs the risk of losing if they don't match the opposition in work. And Doug Gilmore was again the best Leaf on the ice, as he has so many times this year. And when he plays against Steve Eiserman, he seems to be able to keep Eiserman under control and yet make a contribution offensively. That goes all the way back to their junior days. Gilmore and Cornwall, Eiserman and Peterborough. Doug Don Gilmore. Cherry is with me, and there's your man. Yes, sir, and here's my other man, Paul Coffey. Just going by, I'll tell you, boy. I shook his hand. He's never got under three points. Anytime I shook his hand, Harry is awful strange right. Harry is right. They've got to get off to a great start, but they've got to play three periods, not like they did the last game. One good period, rely on putt back. They've got to take it to them for three periods. If you're happy about Coffee and Gilmore, you love the man refereeing today. Hey, Paul Stewart, folks, you know that you're in for a good game. But Paul Stewart, you know the players will be playing. There'll be no complaining about the referee. you got to win the game tonight, boys. She's a good one. But you know, Don, Paul Stewart had Quebec Montreal the last time you loved them. They're the two least penalized teams in these Stanley Cup playoffs. Outside of Calgary, Toronto, Detroit are the most penalized teams. Well, we'll see tonight. There's Dino standing in front of the net. Little guy, five foot ten, guts, I'll tell you, boy. Boy, the excitement here is unbelievable. This should be a dandy game tonight. You mentioned Dino Cicerelli. He hasn't got a goal yet. He had a couple of deflections just missed. What about Felix Potvin, Tim Shevel there this evening? Well, if you can't pay any attention to Dino in front, like, like Potvin did the last time, just stop the pucks. Never mind Dino. Never mind the guys in front. Just stop the pucks. That's what happened in Detroit. Thank you, Don. It was a great decision to allow pro sports on Sunday nights in Toronto. Game four of the Norris Division semifinals. As I said, they want to keep everything the way they had it two nights ago, so they'll introduce the starting lineups here at the Gardens this evening. Let's take it upstairs to PA announcer Paul Morris. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game four of the Norris Division semifinal. Tonight's starting lineup for the Detroit Red Wings. On defense, number three, Steve Chasson. On defense, number 16, Vladimir Konstantinov. At left wing, number 91, Sergei Fedorov. At right wing, number 22, Dino Cicerelli. At center, number 19, Steve Eisen. Starting in goal, number 32, Tim Shevelday. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's starting lineup for your Toronto Maple Leafs. On defense, number four, Jay Bella. On defense, number 23, Todd Gill. At left wing, number 25, Peter Zezel. Right wing, number 14, Dave Andrichuk. At center, number 93, Doug Gilmore. Starting in goal, number 29, Felix Potvin. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please rise and join Michael Burgess in the singing of our national anthem. So proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the
and drop the puck. Bob Cole, Harry Neal, and Game 4 of the Norris Division semifinals. The Detroit Red Wings at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto on Molson Hockey Night in Canada and the Stanley Cup playoffs on CBC next. Molson Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. Brought to you by Molson Canadian Ice. Welcome to the Ice Age. By Ford of Canada, where quality is job one, it's working. By Imperial Oil and Esso Associates, proud to be one of the leading sponsors of youth hockey in Canada. And by Pepsi, gotta have it. The referee for game four is ready to get it underway. Hello again, everybody. Bob Cole in the gondola with Harry Neal, and we are underway. Iserman, Fedorov, and Cicerelli, the starting forward line for Detroit. Gilmore, Zezel, and Andrichuk for the Maple Leafs. And here's Gilmore chasing the puck. Chase on the defenseman back there with Konstantinov. They do not clear it. It is shot right to Fedorov, however, by Andrichuk. Cicerelli comes to center. And his pass dropped to Iserman now. He is checked by Hill. Iserman intercepted a leaf clearing pass. It is Iserman again coming in there for Detroit. Iserman on the backhand. Hot fan his first stop of the game. And the Leafs shoot it out. Toronto looking to get that great start just as they did in game three. The Red Wings seem to be fired up a little more for this one. And here they come again. This is Kennedy. He's in back of the goal and hit the side of the net with that attempted pass out. And the Leafs reeling just a little bit. Clear it out. Troy organized. They start back. Through the middle is Lidstrom. Up on the wing. Big Colbert is by Lafay. Colbert comes in there hitting Lafay. They collide a second time and the puck booted into the corner by Colbert. Trying to get loose. He cannot get loose. And it's Kennedy trying to pass it up to him now. And the net goes toppling over Putman as he goes down to smother the puck. And Looks as if we're off to another big start and great emotion. Well, Detroit certainly is far more prepared to start this game than they were game three. Paul Stewart, the referee, Kevin Collins, and Brian Murphy will work the lines again tonight. Off-ice officials are from Quebec. Tim Chevalier. Well, he's had a busy year with Detroit. He started 67 of the 84 games at one point, 17 straight. He had 29 saves in Toronto's four win on Friday. And it was in that game three that Felix Potvin stymied almost every opportunity the Red Wings had. He was especially sharp in the second period when he made a whopping 18 saves. Here's some good defensive zone coverage on one of the guys in the league, 24 Probert, who may be as tough as anybody to contain by Lefebvre. Face off in the leave zone. To the left of the net, Rouse goes behind the goal. Played it up on the boards and a stop by Howe. His shot got by the net, didn't miss by much. Detroit continue to press the Maple Leafs. Now it's Pearson and Clark. Clark rushing in against Howe along the boards. Coming in front, trying to jab it in. And Chevalier had to be careful with that. Clark, a great rush down the right wing. Now he's bumped by Racine. Mark Howe to Racine, hit escape. Pass to center is intercepted by the Maple Leafs' Rouse. Ellen, ahead to Clark. Clark coming in again. Gets a shot, but not much on it. It was deflected by Racine. Howe got it out. Near center ice, the Red Wings bring it in. 
Griggs, weak shot, scooped away by Putman. And the Leafs Clark again got as far as his own line. And the Red Wings can't get organized now. Clark shoots it from center ice, and he wants to get off. Nearing the three-minute mark of the first period, no score. Fedorov coming in for Detroit. Stick handling over the line. Into the corner, it's slapped on the boards, not out. Now it'll come out, and Chase on will go back to his own blue line. His pass intercepted. Good checking by Zeffel. Shoulder save. Red Wings out. Ahead to Isabard. Cutting him on the backhand. And that whistled high over Putman. Coming up to the four minute mark now. Still no score. Red Wings stopped at the line by McCown as Federal. He brought it back in. And Kozlov was offside. Yes, another great start. Tim Chevalier made a great stop on a real bullet 40-footer off the stick of Mike Foligno, and it hit him in the left shoulder. And when the play left the zone, Chevalier doing all kinds of exercises to try to get the feeling back in his arm. Foligno was about 25 feet in front of him when he let that one fly. And it was a rocket. Zessel and Iserman. You'll see that matchup a lot tonight. Allen. Flip the puck back. Lefebvre does not get it out. Eiserman gets his shot away. That whistle by in front of Puffman to the other side and all the way back down the ice. Chase on back in a hurry. Long pass hitting Eiserman outside the Detroit line and Ellen got it. Shot it back in. Detroit come back to line and up. Eiserman on the move takes the pass. He can't get by Pearson. Puck does, gets over center, and is shot in by Gallant. Leafs just roll it away to center ice. They've settled down a bit now. As we just passed the four-minute mark of period number one. No score. Pass to Cicerelli near center, and he left it for Chason. Up over the line, Gallant. He's covered by the count. That there's a turnover in the neutral zone. Gallant gets it. The Leafs get their stick on it again. Gallant bats it into Iserman. There goes Cicerelli. The fake shot to his right. And then as Potvin goes down, Cicerelli can't get it up. A fine stop by Felix Potvin. And that first goal is so critical. And Potvin denies the Red Wings that privilege. What a setup by Iserman to Cicerelli. But he couldn't score. Face off to Troy. Lindstrom hammers it to the boards in the corner. That's Felino, 71. And here's Rouse from the corner to Berg. It got by him down the ice. That'll be icing. Coffee back. Well, at this morning's skate, the Red Wing players especially were complaining about the bad ice in Maple Leaf Gardens this morning. They had a rock concert in here last night. Both teams had to practice at St. Michael's Arena. And if the ice is slow and a little heavy, like it was this morning on this humid day, it could benefit the Leafs, who don't skate as well and don't pass as well as the Red Wings. Terry Murray knows, or Brian Murray, excuse me, knows. He doesn't want to get into a short two out of three series to see who advances. Coffee gets set. The shot is blocked, but Coffee recovers in time. Berg took the shot on the shins and fell. Potvash steering one aside from the count. Up on the boards is Probert. Leaks will get the puck out over the line. Lindstrom dropped it back to center, and Burr shot it in. Rouse again. Probert comes in to watch him. Leaks get it ahead. Up to center, Cullen comes over the line. He has Berg in the count. Here's Foligno, backhand shot. He missed by a couple of feet with a low backhander. Gill got back. Now from the Detroit line, he leaves it for Berg. His shot is deflected by Sheldon. Up for the Red Wings and up to center ice. Primo centered it. He was bumped back to the 
net as he did. Berg from center right shoots it in for the Maple Leafs. Powell missed it. Put loose in front of the net, but very quickly Racine shot it up the center and Primo again bumped by Gill as he tried to chase it. Primo is number 55. Howe misses one. Gets it up and lost it again. Michael Wayne is in there. And he fanned on that pass attempt. Clark couldn't keep it in. Now Clark. He couldn't hang on to it. Michael Wayne was all the way deep behind the Detroit net and couldn't get out. Well, let's have a look at the lineups here. Detroit have gone with the same team with one exception. They have taken John O'Grodnick out and put Gerard Gallant back in, who missed game three with a Charlie horse. The Leafs similarly have made one change. They've taken Ken Baumgartner out and put in McIlwain to give them a little more speed and a little more versatility on the forward lines. And the Leafs come on now with Marinov. This will be his first turn. Rouse is the other defenseman. Vanderbilt with Zessel and Osborne. The coaches are now complaining about to Paul Stewart about the changes. Remember now, the Leafs have about six to eight seconds after the Red Wings put their lineup out there to make the necessary change to get the matchup they want. But you can't, you have to put everybody out at once. You can't be putting two guys out now and two guys out later. And I think Stewart's laying the law down early and he's asking the linesman to give him a hand and watching for it. Detroit's line, Eisenhardt, number 21, is on. Kozlov is going to take the face off. He's 13. And he wins the draw. Galan is on the other way. Vanderbilt missed one. It's kept in by Miranov. Zezel up and behind the net. Vanderbilt is in using the body. Konstantinov coming out for Detroit and up the center. A nice pass to Galad. Hit the ball post with that hard shot. Galad fired one off the post. Still no score in this first period. And it's Osborne leaving it for Zessel. His pass. He gets it back. Shoots it. Rebound is there. Osborne missed it. And the Red Wings to relieve the pressure shoot at the center. Penalty coming up against Detroit. Zessel is Zazzle backs off, Potvin goes to the bench. They have an extra skater on now. It's a Detroit penalty, the first one called in the game, and the Leafs are on the puck and come in. The pass to Vanderbilt doesn't work. And finally, Detroit touches the puck. And it's going to be eyes of art, I believe, of the Detroit Red Wings, who will get this first penalty of the game. Here's the penalty right here. Osborne goes in for the hit, and Eisenbart gets his stick in his arms and his elbow up in his face. And for that, he'll serve the first penalty of this hockey game. It is an elbowing penalty to Eisenbart, 7.05 the time. So the first power play of the game belongs to Toronto. There is no score. Here's Allen taking the puck back in there. He shot it high on the glass. Gilmore allowed it to come back. And Richuk rolled it up to the corner. Gilmore is there. So is Cullen to the blue line. Back in for Cullen. Now to Ellen. Ellen's shot. Stopped by Shovel Day. The Red Wings a chance to clear the net. missed a great chance as he turned to shoot. Now Ellen's shot. Big rebound. Eisenman is there for Detroit. He decides to skate up for his shot. He put it on the net. Hot fan will say 120 left in the penalty to Detroit's Eisenbahn. No score. The Maple Leafs coming in. It is Collins setting it up. Now at the blue line, it is Ellen. No shot. Pass right in front. Here's Gill. Gill to Ellett. They pass it around well. Gill at the blue. Gill at the blue line. Shot it in. Now Ellett. He shot his block. And the Red Wings hang on. Veteran shoots it down the ice. Some glorious scoring opportunities for the Maple Leafs. 35 seconds left in the penalty to Detroit. Ellett comes out. Tark takes the pass. He's up over the line and leaving it for Zazzle. He's going for the net. Into Clark. Clark tried to center it. And again, it's Detroit shooting it to the blue line, but not out. Baranoff fired one in.
Again, Detroit with a chance to move it out. This time they will. 15 seconds left and their penalty. Down the ice to punt back. Penalty just about over. Eight seconds left on it. Baranov for Toronto to Clark. Clark moves over the line for the shot. A big rebound. And the Red Wings are there to shoot at the length of the ice right on the net. So no icing. The penalty had been served. No score. First period. We're coming up to the halfway mark. Leafs dump it to center ice. Game four. The Norris Division semifinal. Detroit leading the series. Two games to one. Both wins at the Joe Louis Arena. Toronto's shooting it in. Here comes McElwain. McElwain in the corner. Stick handled out to Clark around the net. He's coming out front. Clark gets set. Clark is in there again. Clark all fired up in this first period. Kennedy's pass. It got up the center and back to Burr. Burr's shot. Rebound off Puck Man. He hangs on to it. And covers up as Kennedy comes flying in. And slammed into the boards behind Puck Man. Uh, the most dangerous thing that can happen to Leafs turnovers in the neutral zone or just inside the Red Wing zone. Wendell Clark lost the puck. And the next thing you knew, four Red Wings are on the rush. And here's the end of the chance. It's a good stop by Potvin. He gets up and he's ready for the rebound. There is none, but he smothers the puck. The Red Wings. Anatok had a great chance, as you mentioned, Bob, on the power play. Now, we've watched him enough to know that he doesn't miss those chances very often. The reason he missed, he didn't make a clean reception. The Leafs have had trouble entering the zone on the power play because of the way the Red Wings stand up. You can see Anderchuk throwing a pick there to give the puck carrier an extra second and an extra stride. Face off to the left of Puck Van. No score, first period. And we play 10-10. it to Andrichuk. He tried to hit Gilmore with the second pass. Konstantinov for Kozlov. Konstantinov again. And he shoots at the center. Eisenbart comes back. Andrichuk watching him. Chase on from his own zone. Nearly lost it. But he got it up the center ice. And it's dropped back out over the line by Kozlov. Federov turns back to center. He's a smoothie. there to help. It's the Toronto Maple Leafs coming up with the puck and getting it out. Berg and Zessel collide, but Zessel keeps going with it until Racine took it away from him. Racine's pass off the boards to center ice. The Red Wings on the move again. Here comes Fedorov. Fedorov spinning back. A weak shot tipped in front of the net. But Fab managed to get the pad on it. Again, Isabard to Fedorov. Loose puck in front. Racine this 25 remaining in the first period. No score. Shots are 8 to 7. I'll tell you, it has been hectic in the first half of this opening period. And here's Gilmore coming in with Berg. Berg shot. That hit somebody in front of the net. The puck loose for a few seconds until Galan shoveled it out to center ice. Red Wings Heiserman finding Galan again. Galan getting set. Can't shoot it. He's tied up. Konstantinov, no shot. The lad had a good shot earlier, hit the post with it. Leafs dump it out now. 7.50 remaining, first period. And Konstantinov. Iserman won't get a chance to play it. Town slapped it back in. Chase on behind the net. Andrew Chuck stands in front of Chevelday, watching the Detroit defenseman blew it out. Had to hurry that pass, and the Leafs stop it. Shoot it back in. Pass goes into Gilmore. Gilmore with Pearson. Gilmore! Like shot. Red Wings sent two skaters away. Cesarelli leads the attack. Chason's weak shot into the glove of Potvin. He put it down and slapped the pass to Gilmore. What a chance Gilmore had on that last rush. He went in there and just failed to get a shot away. Well, 
the Leaf alumni back. Norm Ullman, Paul Henderson, Ron Ellis. They're enjoying the new version of the Leafs, as are most of the fans here at Maple Leaf Gardens. 7.05 left to play in the first period. No score. Burr intercepting a pass, and Probert gives it to him again. Probert behind the net. Probert trying to dig it out for Kennedy. Kennedy's shot is blocked by Cullen. Gets in front. High shot over the net by Burr. He somehow fired a hard one, but a little too high. Burr reaching for it. And it's Osborne who gets the puck out of the zone away from Kennedy. 6.35 left in the opening period. Scoreless here at Maple Leaf Gardens in game four. Burr, dunk, one in. Colbert is in first. Polino had a check though, and the Leafs get it back out. How to receive. Up through center ice is Sean Burr coming in. Burr trying to go for the net. He nearly got in there. Here's Colbert. He tries to center it and does. Coffee mishandled it. Coffee then fed on a shot. And Puttman slows it down. you know to stay on well this line of Kennedy Burr and Probert have caused all kinds of trouble for the Leafs with their defensive zone coverage Bob Probert as I mentioned early is a tough customer to contain Paul Coffey comes roaring off the point and prolongs this long siege and this is how it ended Probert and Rouse exchanging shoves words dirty looks Mr. Stavro, the owner of the Leafs, and what owner would not would miss a hockey game like this? Mr. Illich, the owner of the Red Wings, is also in the game. He's sitting right beside the Red Wing bench to make sure the coaches make the right decisions. With Robert of Detroit and Rouse of Toronto are off roughing minors here at 1353. Well, there's been a great pace to this game. Is it my imagination, Bob, or is it a fact how much better the games are in the playoffs when all the players are paid the same and they can only increase their playoff share by winning? No question, a terrific pace to start this game again tonight here in Toronto. No score in this first period. Detroit. Blitz from shot. Boot it out. Rebound was there in front of Puck Van, but the Leafs recover and clear it out to center ice. Lidstrom. Lidstrom again. And now he drops it. On the move is Coffey. Paul Coffey comes in with the brakes on, throws it in front, and it was deflected off the Leaf player. Puck had to be careful. Lidstrom shot into the goal. Puck Van doesn't know where it is. He fell. And fortunately for Puck Van, the Maple Leafs, it was right there as he fell on it. It came off the post. Well, I mentioned before, Defensive zone coverage when you're playing four skaters against four, the center has to remember he's in charge of one of the point men. And look where Doug Gilmore is. It went off the point. Ellett, the defenseman, had to roar out to the top of the circle. It's a man-on-man -man coverage. The two leaf forwards have to take the two Red Wing defensemen, and the Red Wing forwards are to be taken by the Leaf defense. Once you get confused and running around, that's what can happen to you. The puck went through all right. It didn't get as far as the post. As you see on the replay, Potvin had it go off his glove and then it dropped behind him. And he fell on it. So the Red Wings come close, very close. However, no score yet. And the Leafs win the draw. Zazza and Gill. It is Gill. He was tripped up as he tried to get going. Allen takes it from the blue line. Ahead to Berg. Berg flipped one in the general direction of the net. Chevalier stepped up. It is centered, but the Red Wings are there. Shepard brings it back out. Shepard gets to center and weaves to the far side. Now he passes one in too far for Iserman. And the Leafs bounce it off the glass down the ice. This is Shepard. And behind Howe, he goes in with pretty good hustle though to pick it up. He can come back and he hit Howe. Now Gill skating out for Toronto. Gill with Berg. Ellett is going off. The two teams changing. Gill all alone on the rush. Upended as he ran into Primo. 
4.45 left in the opening period. Fedorov down the right wing boards. He has some room in there. Potvin will hang on to that one with Big Primo coming in. Storming into the goaltender and he fell to the ice. But Potvin held on to it. A reminder coming up during the first intermission, Coach's Corner with Don Cherry and Ron McLean. And Ford remembers 1927, the New York Rangers and the Montreal Maroons. 4.37 left in the opening period. Detroit pressing the Maple Leafs. Shot tipped by Fedorov and just missed the short side. Primo picks it up. The count caught him in time and Gilmore goes back to his own net. He sees Primo chasing him, so he goes to Lefebvre, out to Andrichuk. He left it for McCown. McCown gets over center and backhands it in, and out of the net is Shovel Day. The Leafs are in court checking, but the Red Wings will pick it up and skate out with it. Chuck missed it at center ice. And Dave Ellip comes back. 3.45 to play in the opening period. Great pace to start the hockey game. Down the ice it goes. And Coffey winds up in his own zone. He gives it to Lidstrom. And then the pass was a good one to Gallant. He's over the line trying to hit Cicerelli and was bumped off the puck. Berg at center. He can't get by Lidstrom. Zassel can was over the line and that is offside. Well, it's been a very aggressive game and for the most part, quite a sensibly aggressive game. Not nearly the stick work we saw in game two in Detroit or in game three Friday night. McCowan throws a real good body check coming right up here on Big Keith Primo to stop him suddenly. And when you do that, the puck usually goes to your team. Here comes Probert coming out of the box and while he falls, Rouse rattles Fedorov to the ice. Two good checks, clean. 3.24 left to play in the first period. There is no score. Detroit moving the puck into the lead zone. Gilmore was watching Iserman as he did that. Light bumping at the center to the two great centermen. It's McCown trying to take it away from Cicerelli. Cicerelli and set him flying. The helmet is off again. Cicerelli, 22, comes back. And, and down he goes again. Cicerelli showing all kinds of courage. <laughs> Bumped to the ice by Big Andrichuk. And boy, he got up and came right back after him. And hit him again and went down again. Now Cicerelli's helmet is not buckled up. And he took a couple of good shots, the first of which knocked his helmet off. I've often wondered how many penalties that draws when the referee only gets his, a glimpse of the hit and then thinks that Cicerelli's helmet pops up. Well, that must have been an illegal elbow or high stick. Now here comes Cicerelli. He's trying to squeeze past McCowan, and then Anderchuk throws him into the boards, and off comes his helmet. Cicerelli, of course, He's not going to take anything from anybody. He takes a run at Anderchuk, but falls off him, and now he gives him a little slash in the back of the legs. Cicerelli, a born competitor, but he can't draw as many penalties with that helmet trick as he used to. Detroit shooting the puck in from center is Konstantino. Foligno and Probert were bumping over there. Now it's Probert coming in, bumping with Rouse. He centered it. Kennedy, sharp angle shot. Now it goes behind the net. Probert, all tied up by Rouse in front of the net. The Leafs get it out of the zone, and Coffey comes back. 2.24 left to play in the first period. No score. Burr moving up over the line. He was upended. Coffey out of the net. Shot it to the corner. The Leafs, Burr, trying to get it out, and he can't do it. Hey, 
Bruins stick. 146 left to play in the first period. Yes, it's hot here tonight in the gardens. This is playoff hockey at its best. Some stupendous body checks being thrown. Clean ones, legal ones, they hurt. But the guy taking the hit gets up and he looks for somebody to knock down. Jamie McCowan stops Sean Burr suddenly on the boards. Kennedy comes in and he's a little guy but he packs a good wallop as he throws Rouse into the side of the rink. And the hits go on, especially when Probert, Kennedy and Burr are on. They cause a physical problem for the Leafs in their own zone. They're not a smooth threesome, but they're aggressive and they're hard to contain. Federal now for Detroit with eyes apart. Part to his right, right in front of Potvin. It'll be McIlwain on the draw for Toronto. Kozlov, the other winger for Detroit, went in to pick it up and couldn't find it. And the Leafs dump it down to Chevalier. The scene around the net for the Red Wings. Being watched by McIlwain. The pass comes in on the right side for Eisenbart. The speedy winger is in. And he takes Potvin into the goal. And there's a penalty coming up for the Maple Leafs. I do believe it'll be a tripping call against the Leafs. As the Red Wing player was upended, Eisenbart really flying in on the right wing. And a tripping penalty has been called against Toronto's Ellen. Well, Detroit Red Wings, one of their characteristics are long passes from just in front of their net to the red line or cross-ice passes. If you let them do it, here's how they can burn you. Look at this one. Right from the icing line, all the way up to the red line, and then over to put Isabard in the clear. The Leafs are in a three-on-three -three situation and have got it played pretty well, but with those passes, they can catch you, and Ellen has to take the tripping penalty in order to avoid the breakaway by Eisenhower. Only the second power play opportunity of this first period. The other belonging to the Maple Leafs now as Dave Allen is off for tripping. The Red Wings, with 128 remaining in the opening period, get their shot at a power play. And they send on Eisenhower, of course, Cicerelli, will be on the right side, and Big Primo will play the left wing. And the defense pairing will be Chase on and a coffee. Leafs have Berg, Lefebvre, Zessel, and Rouse. And Zessel, who has been sharp on these face-offs, is in there against Eiserman now. Of course, Eiserman is not too shabby on face-offs either. Kevin Collins is the linesman. And Zazzle wins it smartly. It is shot on the boards and it got by Coffey. Down to the Detroit line is Coffey. Zazzle chased him all the way. Here's Chase on starting the Red Wings out. Iserman getting away from Berg, but he has to go back to do it. Chase on from Iserman. And now Coffey through the middle. Coffey is over the line, winding up. The shot deflected into the crowd. One minute and one second left to play in the first period. Well, Paul Coffey leads the Detroit Red Wings, or the National Hockey League, among defensemen in points with six assists, and he has had 14 shots on goal. He took a little too long to get that shot away. I think he'd tell you that, too. And as a result, the Leafs defenseman deflected it out of the ring. Cicerelli's going to park himself in front of the net as sure as we're in the gun. So that's one of the reasons Cecil would like to win the faceoff again, this time against Primo. And he won it again. And the Leafs will clear the puck into the final minute of the period. That long shot. Chevalier in the stick set. Cecil in there hitting. He ran into Primo. Red Wings come up with 45 seconds left in the period. And again, a Paul Coffey shot in was deflected into the crowd. Well, there are two Blue Jays who probably would have caught that deflection. Devon White and Joe Carter, hockey fans, baseball players. Quite often, the Blue Jays find their way down to playoff games or games late in the season here at Maple Leaf Gardens. Can't and get I... tickets. Maybe they have connections. <laughs> They were telling me yesterday, Harry, as you see Zessel going in to hit Primo on that check. Zessel playing a powerful role, penalty killing. 
were getting somewhere around $300 a piece for tickets outside the building yesterday. For this game. Well, nobody is disappointed yet. Again, the puck over the glass into the crowd with 27.8 seconds left to play in the period. It's scoreless, 11 to 10. Are the shots in favor of Detroit? The Red Wings on a power play now. Well, I told you about the ice here at Maple Leaf Gardens not being very good, and that hard pass from the point across the offensive zone to the winger, it may just have been rumbling on the on the rough ice, and it hit the top of the Red Wing player's stick and went out of the rink. With 27 seconds left here in the first period and a minute in the penalty to Dave Allen. Center ice, how? Red Wings trying to get one here before the period is out. 20 seconds left. They shoot it in. Probert is charging in there hard. Probert bumping McCown. But it's Osborne who is very cool, turning, holding it for a second or two, and then backhanding the puck away. Coffee. Long pass. Over center. Shepard could play it. He knew it. So it goes all the way down the ice. That is the end of the first period, and a fine period it was. Well, we've had either one of these teams have great periods. But in here in the first period of game four, both teams were at the top of their game, and it was a good display of NHL playoff hockey. And the final shots on goal in period number one were by Detroit, 11, and by the Maple Leafs, 10. Coming up, Don Cherry will be in the coach's corner. And the score at the end of the first period, Toronto nothing, Detroit nothing. Cole with Harry Neal in the gondola. And here comes period number two. We start with a Detroit power play. There is no score. Allen has 30 seconds left in his penalty. Coffee starts the Red Wings. Pass comes into Federal. Federal with Shepard going for the net. Shepard couldn't make contact in front of the goal. Colbert gets it, but Zezel intercepted and shot it down the ice right on the net. Ten seconds left in the Leaf penalty. Red Wings move it in a hurry. Lidstrom coming to center. He fires it in there. LaFay tipping it, but it's still inside the line. Nice play by Cecil, and Allen is out of the penalty box. The Leafs are at full strength again. Rouse kick one at center to keep it away from Probert. And Rachuk did not pick it up. Anderson. Back of the net it goes. Gilmore giving chase. Gilmore trying to play it back to the line where McCown was waiting, but the Red Wings get it out. Lidstrom back up inside his own line. Cicerelli for Detroit. Comes in over the line and circles back. They were changing. Chason couldn't stop it. Anderson failed to take it away from him. It is Eiserman trying to go in on McCown. Andrichuk intercepted. His pass to Anderson. Anderson moving over the Detroit line. Now he settles it. He just missed. Gilmore is the And there's going to be a penalty called against Chason. But Gilmore is very slow getting up. That hit from behind. And Gilmore is cut. As you see, he was hurt. He's not out. Absolutely sure where he is. Chase on more than a check. It was a shove from behind. And the first thing to hit the board was Gilmore's head. I think it may be a major penalty, Harry. Well, wait. Stewart came over to the penalty box with all five fingers, four fingers, and the thumb showing to the penalty timekeeper. And Chase on is gone. Here he goes. It's a major against the track. Steve Chase on number three gets five minutes and a game misconduct from hitting for hitting from behind, and there it is there. Boy, I don't know whether that's worth five, Bob. That was a shove, and I'm not trying to diminish the danger of hits from behind, but that was not a charge. It wasn't a cross check. It was a shove, and unfortunately for Gilmore, he hit his head on the top of the board. That's a real severe penalty in the playoffs. 
to a guy like Steve Chase on. I know hitting from behind is a no-no, but I think that was four, not five minutes. A boarding major penalty to Chase on. So it's an opportunity for the Maple Leafs to get on the scoreboard. So far, nobody has been able to do that. Scoreless, we're in the second, and the Red Wings will have to kill off the five-minute penalty now. They shoot it down the ice. Chase on has been one of the stronger rear guards for Detroit, and he's out of the game. Here's Burr intercepting. He's bumped by Gill, and Clark is on the move for Toronto. Eiserman caught him. Clark got it back again. Well, it's shot. And the rebound for Racine, but he can't put it by Ellen. It is centered by Cullen. The Red Wings intercept and shoot it away. Ellen with Gill. Pearson is up front. Clark and Cullen are going off. Is on the ice again. And Chuck is the other forward for the Maple Leafs. Four minutes left in the major penalty against Detroit. No score, second period. Gill shoots it in to get away from Fedorov. Shevelday trying to rip it away himself. The Red Wings get it to the line. Gill kept it in, but now it'll be Howe. Mark Howe skating away from Pearson, killing a few seconds by stopping there at center ice. Now he moves out with Fedorov. Fedorov gets set. Eisenberg in front. And pop by the save. Now the Leafs move it out. Anderson is racing in there. Anderson knocked down. And he goes sliding into the boards. But the play goes right on. And the Red Wings clear it. 3-19 left in the major penalty. Scoreless second period. Toronto moving out. Up to center. Gilmore tapped it back for Anderson. He's over the line. Anderson jamming on the brakes in the corner and coming back a bit. Now he goes in again and centered it. Good shot. And hit a skate and bounce wide of the net. On the other side, McCown to Marinov. A pass goes into Gilmore by him. Anderson back in the net. It's fired on the glass and gets by McCown. Down the ice. Red Wings doing a good job. 240 remaining in that major penalty. No score. Pass to Pearson. Pearson along the boards, trying to center it. And it's Clark back in the net, dropped it there. And centered it again. Burr was there, but can't move it out. Shot into the corner again. The Leafs continue to pressure the Red Wings. 2.15 left in that major. No score, second period. left in that major penalty and full marks to the Red Wings are holding off the Leafs. I wonder whether Pat Burns will take a timeout now. His first power play unit is much stronger than his second. You could get another minute out of the five out of the first if you took the timeout. Let's go to Ron McLean who has this update. Period for the Leafs in this series. They've been outscored 8-2 and outshot 38-24. That's not likely going to happen. That shot disadvantage with a major penalty here. But the second's been the worst for the Leafs. Toronto winning the draw. Andrew Chuck and Collin going for the net. Collin shot it back of the goal. And Allen was there at the blue line again. Drilled one in there and it was wide of the net. Minute 50 left in the major penalty now. No score, second period, the Red Wings killing off this major. It is Fedorov coming in. His pass, the shot by Howe is blocked. 135 left on the major penalty, and here it's Hamrachuk up over the Red Wing line. He fell as he went in there. He bumped the linesman, Collins, and the linesman was slow to get up. Kevin Collins. Well, Anderchuk was tripped on the rush, and he slid right into Kevin Collins, knocking him down. Collins is a tough customer from Springfield, Mass. He'll be all right. Anderchuk trying to step past Fedorov here. You can see he was tripped, and then he rips the feet from underneath Collins as he slides into the Detroit zone. And a 25 left of the Detroit penalty. Gallant is in the penalty box. For Chase on. You got a major in a game. Fedorov. Let the puck out of 
of the zone. And it's Fedorov coming in. He's dangerous. Fedorov turning away from the net. Centers it. He's intercepted and comes out over the line. Ellett moving up with Gilmore. Drives the shot. That was stopped by Howe. It is Heiserman. One man back. Heiserman going in on Gil. And Gil played the man. One minute left to the penalty. Here's Gil coming to center. Hills pass it over the line and Cullen dumped it off to the corner. Konstantinov ripped it high and it gets out again. 45 seconds left in that major. And the crowd very restless now. They figured the Leafs might get one. Or maybe two. Major penalty winding down. It's shot in back of the net. Gilmore off the boards to McCown. McCown turned, put it in there, and Anderson missed it. Felino on the ice now trying to get something going. He can't center it. It is Gilmore with the puck. No, he had the puck. McCown had gone in deep. And the puck rolled all the way back inside the leaf blue line. A big effort by the Red Wings. And boy, will they get a lift. Five seconds left in the major. Here's Coffey. He's in there. And the shot is blocked by Potman. The major penalty has been served. The Red Wings are at full strength. No score in the second period. Felino in there with Pearson. Pearson and Gilmore miss it. The Red Wings come back out. Galan over his stick. Rouse back. It is Galan following the play. He's cutting for the net. The shot is blocked. And it's Pearson tipping it out to center ice. Felino was up there. McElwain didn't see him. The Red Wings shoot it in. Nearing the eight minute mark of the second period. No score. Now near the Detroit line. Here's Racine. Tipped it to Rouse. Is that center ice? McElwain dropped it back. And Lafave is up on the rush. Played it up for Pearson off his stick. And right in for Lindstrom. Iserman again coming out. The pass gets up to Galan. That didn't work. Leaps back in. Clark got over the line with Pearson shooting. And he missed on the short side by a couple of feet. Red Wings send two away. It is Galant coming in. His pass was stopped by Gill. The Red Wings are on it. They center it. McElwain was there but couldn't move it out over the line. Another shot of Red Galant shot. That's blocked by Potvin. Potvin coming up big on that shot by Galant. Pearson dropping it for Gill. Into Pearson and rolled by him. Coffey tipped it away from him. Cicerelli and Berg get together with Probert now. It is shot into the Toronto zone. Probert chasing Zezel. Zezel was hit by Cicerelli. Burr played one at the side of the net. Probert after it. He was bumped. Racine shot it from the blue line. And Gill takes it for Toronto. No scores, second period. Again, a great pace to this period. The count back, Probert chasing. It is Probert getting the puck out front, but Cecil got back. It's centered again. Here's Kennedy scores. Kennedy scoring for the Red Wings. First goal of the game. Detroit leads one to nothing. Well, that line, Burr, Probert, and Kennedy, I mentioned it in the first period. They are the most dangerous line on the forecheck. They get a break here because you're going to see the puck hit the glass and come straight out in front of the net instead of going around. That allowed Kennedy to get it, and he just put it on the short side on Felix Potvin, who should have been out of the net a little further than he was at the time of the shot. But it was a perfect shot. Short side, one of the Kennedy, unassisted, time 852. 52, an unassisted goal by Kennedy. That's his first of the playoffs. 8.52 of the second period. The Red Wings take a 1-0 lead. Foligno stopped near the Detroit line. Foligno again a stop by Coffey. Coffey's pass intercepted. Cullen on the boards against Lidstrom. Cullen falls to the ice. The Leafs bring it back but Coffey was speeding back. Now he gave it away to Cullen. Cullen stuck the pass in. Polino came close. Chevalier covering the 
short side. Back comes Rouse for Toronto. Eyes of Art is chasing him. So is Goslaw. Gilmore takes it. Gets out over his own line. And Richuk to center and the long shot in wide of the Detroit net. Federal back there around the goal. Out to Kozlov. Kozlov to center. Rink wide pass into Isabard and Howe is up on the rush. Leafs have it. Halfway mark now, second period. One to nothing, Detroit. Anderson tries a long shot for Andrew Chuck. Assist number two, Sylvain Lefebvre, and number nine, Glenn Anderson. Lefebvre and time. Anderson, assisting on the goal. 10-08 was the time. And Anderson ties the game for the Maple Leafs. Anderson coming in there again. Anderson with the puck in the corner, slipped it back. Lefebvre is turning along the boards, going for the net. He's in there. Trying to jam it in on the short side. And the Red Wings shoot it out. Cicerelli dropped it for Iserman. He has room. Iserman shot. He missed the net with that weak shot. The crowd was checking him. Average Chuck again and Gilmore. Gilmore coming to center. There is McCown up on the rush. And he had to slap it in as the Leafs were making changes. 1-1 one, one down the second. Coffey comes to center. His pass. Knocked down by Gill at the blue line. Hill brings it in. Weak shot by Clark as he was hit on the boards. By Racine. The play is done. We'll return to Maple Leaf Gardens after this message. Well, they're not champions yet this year, but it's the first time in three years, so you can't blame this crowd for being on top of things and being delighted the way things are going. First time in the playoffs. Three years tied here with this Detroit Red Wing machine. 1 1 in the second period. 8 30 remaining in the second period. Lots of stuff going on in the lead zone, and the crowd reacts to that. Coffee drops it back, and Clark was going in there. Primo shot at the center. Here's Drake moving up over the leaf line. The Leaves continue to look for it. It is Clark and Pearson. Pearson comes out of the corner to the blue line to Gill. He had to shoot it back in there for Clark. And it went by him and McElwain. Racine does not get it out on the first try, nor the second. It is Pearson again. McElwain back of the net, centered it. And the Red Wings pick it up and skate out. Drake lofted one through center ice. Pearson lost it to him. And Drake shot it in this time. The Red Wings trying to make changes. As the Leafs step it up to center ice, Clark was there, but it hit the linesman at the far side. Burr shoots it in. Ellis slams it back down the ice. That's going to be icing on a shovel. They plays it, which he does. Comes by Manderville to center on an open wing. That's where Cullen picked it up. Cullen is racing in now. Stopping quickly in the pass behind everybody, but it'll be Manderville getting it back. Rouse's shot. It missed the net by a couple of feet, and Kennedy coming out again with Probert. Probert and Burr over the line. Probert shot deflected high into the crowd. We're 1-1 in the second period with 6.54 remaining. We're back. Bob Cole and Harry Neal in the gondola. If you haven't heard, Chicago is out. St. Louis won this afternoon 4-3. Vancouver leading Winnipeg 1-0 in the first period. And L.A. 
one this afternoon to even that series. New Jersey defeated Pittsburgh, so they prove they can be beaten. Pittsburgh's undefeated streak coming to a close. But it's safe to say they'll be around for a while. They lose one every month, Pittsburgh does, whether they have to or not. 6.40 left to play in the second period. 1-1, Toronto and Detroit. The Red Wings scored first. Kennedy unassisted at 8.52. Right after, the Red Wings killed off a major penalty. Then Andrew Chuck tied it at 10.08. We'll be back. Behind Detroit owner Mike Gillick sitting in the front row, Eves Racine getting his left hand taped as he blocked the shot about two shifts ago. Now don't forget, Jason's already been thrown out of the game. Zazzle against Fedorov, and Zazzle won it. Osborne shot it at the net. Wilson had gone, the puck scored it loose, but the whistle had gone. And they'll do it again to the left of Tim Chevalier. Zazzle has been something else winning these face-offs. Zezel has been superb on the face-offs, and he's played a very aggressive game. Here he kicks it back what is the... to Osborne. Oh. Fedorov did a not a bad job of tying him up, so he couldn't go and fish for that rebound. He has played professional soccer, and as you saw there, is very good with his skates, booting that puck around. 6.20 remaining in the second period. The score, 1-1. Kozlov coming up with Fedorov. He centered it. In front of the net was Eisenhardt, but the fade checked him in time. Leafs get it ahead. Osborne is racing in there. Takes a shot. And he drilled that one very close to the net. Osborne in front. He scores. Osborne gives the Leafs a 2-1 lead. Well, a rather careless play in the Detroit zone on what looked like a harmless play behind the net. It all started when Osborne let a rocket shot go off the left wing that hit the outside of the post and went behind the net. Here's the shot. Now Zezel beats Kozlov to the puck behind the net. Gets half taken out by he and Coffey. Coffey pays no attention to Osborne, and Osborne puts it in with Coffey draped all over him. Paul Coffey, if he has a weakness, Paul, it's his play without the puck in his own zone. Showed right there. Here's number 25, Peter Zezel, and number 10, Bill Berg. Time 13.58. Mark Osborne from Peter Zezel and Bill Berg. Time 13.58. 13.58, the time of the goal by Osborne from Zezel and Berg. Toronto. Now 5.55 left in the second period. And for the first time in the game, the Toronto Maple Leaf fans begin the chant as they lead for the first time. Gilmore at center. Gallant lost a chance to move it. Now Lindstrom fires one from center ice, and here's Cicerelli backing off. McCown had him checked. Eiserman trying to get loose in front of the net. It will dribble out over the blue line. Konstantinov had to get back, and he shot it too high as he tried to pound it back in, and it went over the glass. Well, the ice is really deteriorates quickly here at Maple Leaf Gardens. This is a shot along the boards, and you can see how snowy it is. And the last five or six minutes of the period, the pucks bounce, the passes bounce, and when you take a pass, sometimes it's hard to recover it. And we've noticed that the slick passing Red Wings are always better in the first eight or ten minutes in that department than they are in the last of each period. Kennedy had given Detroit a 1-0 lead, unassisted at 8.52, and Chuck from Lefebvre and Anderson at 10.08, and now Osborne at 13.58 from Zazzle and Berg, 2-1. To Toronto is out, comes in. How checks it closely. It is center. Primo can't get a stick on it. Now he does. Drake is behind the net. And it's Howe's backhander gets into Pop and he holds it with big Primo there. Save the dangerous guy was Mark. 
Mark Howe who jumped in off the point. Now this is a tough play for the goalie when the puck's behind the net. You have to be able to move each way. And if you get out too far, and like Pot Van didn't, they can throw the puck off the back of your leg into the net. Exactly five minutes left in the second period. The shots now are even. 17 apiece. Well, this has been the best game by both teams so far in this series. Coming up during the second intermission, Ron McLean will be talking to the Wings star defenseman, Paul Coffey. He has really given the Wings a dimension that only he can give them offensively from the blue line. When he joined Detroit, their power play rocketed to first overall. And that is no coincidence. Rouse shot it on the boards. Foligno poked it free to center ice. Red Wings get back. Here's Shepard turning with Primo. Shepard shoots one end to the corner. Rouse has it. Rouse just played it on the glass out. It bounced in. And it's Vanderville coming in. Try to shot. That's deflected in behind the net. It is Cullen trying to center it for Vanderville. Cullen lost it. And the Red Wings do not clear it out. Cullen gets it again. Keeps it in. Shoots it behind the goal. Vanderville trying to get loose. Couldn't stop Howe. Drake had it hit his skate. The Red Wings pick it up, and Shepard brings it in with Primo. Primo trying to get by the deep defenseman. Rouse, he can't do it. They bump together. Primo comes in, throwing his big frame around. And Ellen takes that off and shoots the puck away. Up to center, Bird tosses one in to the right of the Detroit net. Four minutes left in the second period. Two to one, Maple Leafs. Colbert near center. Took it away, but Coffey brings it in. Take the shot. He scores. Coffey with a bullet shot up high on the short side, and that ties the game at two. Well, as we've mentioned many times, the Red Wing defenseman loved to get into the rush. Paul Coffey did, and he got the turnover right here as McElwain tips it away from Probert. Now look where Potvin is. Bad angle at the dot. And Potvin should be at the crease, not with his foot out there. He's got to get out of the net. Those kind of shots at that speed either hit you or miss you. But you have to cut down the number of opportunities they'll miss you by getting out to the top of the crease. Coffee had no play, but that shot. Another unassisted goal by the Red Wings. This time, Paul Coffey at 16-12. So we're tied at two. Second period winding down. Coffee with the puck again and shooting it in. Lefebvre comes back. And Puffin got back in time. Here's Colbert digging it loose. Centered it through the crease. Kennedy couldn't get there. Clark tied up by Kennedy. Colbert and Burr on the ice again. Burr's buff takes the puck though. Detroit line and the pass gets in there. Berg into the corner for Osborne. Osborne stop. There's Zezel falling to the ice. He tries to knock it loose. Osborne comes in. And it's the Red Wings failing to clear now as the Leafs apply some pressure of their own. It's slammed to center ice with a minute 50 left in the second period. And into the corner, Konstantinov. He won't 
get it out. Here's a shot that misses on the short side. 140 left in the period. And it's the Red Wings finally getting it up the center. And Gilmore intercepts it. Circles back. He's lining up to do something. Gilmore coming right at the Red Wings. Pass to the line to Andrachuk going in. Andrachuk off stride. Still fighting for it. Here's Gilmore. And it goes behind him. And the Red Wings have to shoot it down the ice. 115 left in the second period in a tied game. Two goals apiece. Gill shot it to Anderson at center, and he was checked by Mark Howe. Now, we're down to one minute left in the period. Last minute of play in this period. Andrew Chuck comes in. Andrew Chuck shot. He missed by a couple of feet. McCown will keep it in. Dumping it to the corner. Gilmore picks it up, and Andrew Chuck is going to get a penalty for throwing the red wing player into the boards. And he's going off for cross-checking. Detroit on a power play as the second period winds down. The Leafs, as they did in the first, get a late penalty. Andrew Chuck is in the box. Berg is up there with one man back and Primo catching up. And Primo did the job on him. 25 seconds left in the period. 2-2 Two -two the score. Here come the Red Wings, led by the captain, Steve Eiserman. He shoots it on the glass. It comes off the board to the corner. Primo is in there with Cicerelli. They try to dig it out. The Leafs try to hold it there. Killing off a few more seconds. Through the crease it goes. Cicerelli was chasing it. At the line, Lidstrom shot in there. As the horn goes to end the second period and another great period of hockey. Oh, a superb hockey game. Both teams at the max as far as energy and effort and intensity is concerned. You could watch a half a dozen periods of these any night in the spring. Kennedy and Coffey scoring for Detroit around Andrew Chuck and Osborne for the Maple Leafs. Right at the end of the period, Cicerelli comes around the net and tries to let a little air out of Felix Potvin. And there go the Red Wings. Coffey getting set to come over and chat with Ron McLean. And he'll be along momentarily. Score at the end of the second period is Toronto Maple Leafs 2, Detroit Red Wings 2. Sheldon Kennedy and Paul Coffey with unassisted goals. Dave Anderchuk and Mark Osborne for the Leafs from Anderson, Lafave, Zezel, and Berg. There are the point getters. You're following along in your pool here in the playoffs. 2 2 at the end of two periods of play, the Wings and the Leafs. Sean Burr, this line of Kennedy, Burr, and Probert has been terrific for checking for Detroit all night. A big hit on Sylvain Lafave. And of course, Wendell Clark and Probert were involved in it all through the latter parts of that period. You see McCown in as well. Bob McGill has been a big part of the Leafs' success against Detroit this season. They went 3-3-1 in the regular season. And, of course, as you well know, Bob can't play in these Stanley Cup playoffs. And he's got a broken jaw. And we talked last night for about 10 minutes. A spack. Chase on lays a glove on his back, and he hits the dasher. Does Gilmore. He's cut, and Paul Stewart had to uh, assess a five-minute and gave misconduct, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Good. I'm glad you jumped in. What would you think of that? Well, like you said, it was... Uh, I didn't think it was a great call. I just, you know, kind of pushed him with one hand, and like you said, he cut back, and unfortunately, he got cut. And uh, whether it's five or not, uh, he called it that way. So what can you do? It's the worst problem for referees in hockey today is that when a player takes that chance, and they do it more than ever now, uh, cut back. What do you do as a ref? Because you're really trying to discourage uh, hits from behind as a rule, and uh, you got caught in the middle. Tell me about the uh, game so far as you saw it tonight. Steve. Well, I think. Uh, uh, you know, Toronto's played a lot better uh, the last two games. Uh, they've been forechecking a little better, uh, making it more difficult for uh, us as defensemen to uh, to get the puck going. So, uh, you know, that cuts down uh, on our offense a little bit. If you're not having an easy time in your own zone, you really seem to be having a great time in the other zone. Uh, 15 points from Detroit defensemen in this series. Your shot was a bullet Friday night. Uh, Paul Coffey's tonight. Uh, what does Brian Murray think about uh, you getting involved and how much does he try to have one guy do it, the other guy stay back, etc.? Well, like he, uh, he encourages. I mean, everybody says he's a defensive coach, but, uh, you know, he, uh, he wants us to join the rush, if at all possible. Like, not, uh, not force it, but if it's there, he wants us to get involved. 
I noticed last night Ronnie Hextall and the Quebec defense when Pierre Paget called a timeout, everybody seemed to be uh, gathered around Jacques Martin, who was your coach with Guelph when you won the Memorial Cup. Uh, how much did uh, Martin mean to your career? Well, I mean, uh, we had a couple of tough years before Jacques came to Guelph, and, uh, you know, I got a lot of respect for uh, Jacques Martin. He, uh, you know, I think he helped uh, polish my game off, and, uh, you know, we went from winning 20 games to uh, winning the Memorial Cup, and I think he had a lot to do with that. You seem to have really found your stride, too, Steve. Uh, the first couple of years, in and out a bit, uh, now it seems that you've found your game. Why do you think that is? Well, you know, uh, first of all, I, I still like to get better, but, uh, you know, uh, I think it takes a while for defensemen to, uh, you know, kind of find their way into the league, and you get to know the, the forwards a little better, and uh, I, th I just think as a defenseman it takes a little more, uh, a little more time to mature. It's true of all uh, people making that transition from junior, especially after a big season, big win in junior like you had. Uh, but congratulations on the transition and uh, the year you had this year, Steve. Right, thank you. Steve Chase on NHL All-Star and uh, his club on defense uh, has been powerful all through this Stanley Cup confrontation with Toronto, as you know. 2-2 two -two after 2, we'll try to get caught up on scores elsewhere, maybe get action on the Winnipeg when we come back on Hockey Night in Canada. 30 Eastern in the Motor City, led by the Motor Man with his mask of flags, Tim Shevelday. The Red Wings getting set for third period action against the Toronto Maple Leafs. It's 2-2 here. Kennedy Coffee, Andrew Chuck, and Osborne are the stars under a moon in Toronto so far. Molson Hockey Night in Canada on the Stanley Cup playoff coverage beat will continue after this. And welcome back, everybody. I'm Bob Cole with Harry Neal in the gondola. And we're about set to go for period number three in this great hockey game. It's tied at two. Well, here are the two fine centers. Gilmore, 16 minutes and 41 seconds. He got cut over the eye in a very physical game. We've got 47 hits, very even in that department. And this has been a wonderful example of good, tough hockey. And as we start the third period, the Detroit Red Wings will have the man advantage. Andrew Chuck is in the penalty box. He has a minute and ten seconds remaining in a cross-checking penalty. So the Leafs shoot it down the ice. First off, Lindstrom and Coffey are the two wing defensemen. Up front, this is Federal. He was bumped at center ice by Bird. The puck goes over the boards at the Leaf bench. Stops the play near the Leaf blue line. Well, I think both coaches can be proud of the way their teams played tonight. The intensity level was is high. They were both ready to play from the opening faceoff. They've uh, contained themselves with reference to taking foolish retaliation penalties, and the game is yet to be decided. Cicerelli, Fedorov, and Eiserman. Zazel on to take this faceoff for Toronto. to get a stick down and he wins the face off again and gets the puck out. 50 seconds left of the penalty to Andrichuk. The Red Wings pound it in near the line. Now gets out the center ice thanks to Zessel slapping it. He is going off now. Gilmore is on with Osborne. Osborne deep in his own zone. Ellett slams at it. And it got by everybody. Coffee, Gilmore, and Eiserman and goes all the way down the ice. 24 seconds left in the Leaf penalty. 2-2 the score. The Red Wings move it in. Led by Eisman. Again, Eisman stops in the corner. Can't make the pass cleanly. Now it's off Eisman's skate. Trying to get loose from McCown. Does. Back to the net. It is McCown shooting it on the boards. Still in there. The penalty about over. Here's Toronto trying to pick it up. Set full strength. The Red Wings keep it in. In back of the net, Cicerelli bumping with Lafave. Lafave holding Cicerelli and the puck. Lanserman digs it out. And it shut off the boards to center ice by the Maple Leafs. 135 into the third period. 2 2. Game four. Red Wings lead the series two games to one, winning both at home. The Leafs winning here the other night. This one is up for grabs. Drain waited too long, was bumped. Puck came back to him and he shot it in. Fans trying to get the lead scoring with some offense. Amber Chuck on the ice starts it out with Gill. Gill has to move it to center ice as he was being checked right away. 
Red Wings come back. Two games like I have never 
seen Toronto fans in a hockey game. Every player will tell you they've really helped them. A relief player. Nearing the five-minute mark of the third period, Toronto has taken the lead over Detroit 3-2 to two on Andrew Chuck's second goal of the game. 4.47 was the time. Gilmore and Anderson had the assists on that Andrew Chuck goal. We'll take a break from this game at Maple Leaf Gardens for this update with Ron. He'll continue to post his books. That game moves along. So you stay right where you are. Don't miss a second of this baby. It's 3-2 Maple Leafs. Nearing the six-minute mark of the third period. The Leafs trying to even the series at two games apiece. Red Wings winning the first two at the Joe Louis Arena. That's where we will be for game five. Two nights from now. It is Fedorov coming in. His centering pass gets in front of the net. Eisenbart was checked. And the Leafs relieved the pressure by shooting it down the ice. It'll be icing. Konstantinov back to touch it. Icing called, and the faceoff comes inside the leaf line. I know you've mentioned Peter Zessel, who's been dynamite on the draw tonight. He, he just saved a goal here on a strong defensive play in his own zone by knocking down Isabard as Isabard was going to get a backhand right here. Players can't score when they're lying down, and in your end, if you can put them down, your chances of giving your goaltender a hand are a lot better. This is maybe the strongest same game, at least of the series, if not of the season, for Peter Zezel. You know, like Grapes was saying, when a referee like Paul Stewart sets the tone that he's going to let him play hockey, the players feel that, I do believe. And right they on. deliver, and they have been delivering solid hits. Leafs shoot it out of the zone, down the ice. Racine comes back. They're nearing the six minute mark of the third. 3 2 Toronto. Here's Shepard taking it for Detroit. And he lobs one in. Rouse was back in a hurry. That is Pearson on the boards. Checked by Howe. Howe was pinching in. He's up there looking for it. Pearson is holding it on the boards. Now Drake gets it. It gets loose out in front with a backhander by Primo Block. And Tart is away again. He's down on Mark Howe. Tart going in. A weak shot and missed the net. McElwain dumped it in behind the goal. Howe coming out. Clark intercepted that. It stopped at the blue line. The Red Wings pick it up and Racine dumped it back. Clark chasing Howe the half. He hit Mark Howe the corner. But Howe saw him coming and was able to move a little bit. Here's Primo. He's up over the line and stopped by Pearson. Pearson can't get it up now. Cullen takes the pass shoots it in. The two teams are changing. Furious pace again in this third period. 3-2 Maple Leafs. Puck shot in by Burr. Big Colbert bumped along the boards and Collett picks it up and comes out with it. Collett's pass was intercepted. He turns again. Shoots it along the boards and out. Vanderbilt won't get there in time. Lidstrom does. Back of the net. He leaves it there for Coffey. Coffey looking out, wondering if he can get some skating room. Decides to give it to Lidstrom. He's over the leaf line. So is Probert. Probert and Gill up together. Burr tried to center it. Potman comes diving out of the net. And he smothers the puck with this line of Burr, Probert, and Kennedy buzzing again. And we're in the third period. With the Maple Leafs leading the Detroit Red Wings 3-2. Shots 22-19 in favor of Detroit. And Rechuk has two goals. The go-ahead goal here in the third. Federov on the puck. To the left of Potvin. Cicerelli pass out front and a shot high. A knuckleball over the net. The Leafs can't get it out. Comes in front and Putman will cover up again with Cicerelli getting it behind Rouse. Well, I'm eating a little crow today as Buffalo Sabres wax the Bruins four straight. I said when someone asked me about Buffalo's chances, it's like waiting for Buffalo to win a playoff round. It's like putting your back porch light on for Jimmy Hoffman. And it 
two this morning. Don Lieber, the assistant coach for Buffalo, phoned me, Bob, and said he just drove by John Muckler's house, and he noticed there was a guy on the back porch that looked just like Jimmy James Hoffa, Hoffa, and then he hung up. <laughs> he made his point, as did the same. Well, they're a happy bunch in Buffalo, and why not? Congratulations, Mr. Muckler. Red Wings win the draw. Coffee along the blue line. Racine shot. Hot fan didn't see it, but it was deflected high. And the Leafs carefully poke it away. Osborne up for checking. It is shot back near center, and Rouse will bring it in for Toronto. Dump one in front. Chevalier grabbed it. Held it. There's a penalty being called against the Red Wings. Eves Racine is going to get it for elbowing. He took a fairly healthy run at the leaf forward along the boards. And at the last minute, he put his hands up or his elbows up. And for that, with 11.58 to go, he's going to get a penalty. Here it is right here. Whoa. <laughs> you can see that he had his elbow right up in Bob Rouse's face. Toronto power play tonight is 0 for 2, including a major, a five-minute major power play. One thing to remember in games one and two, shorthanded goals by the Red Wings were the turning point, in my opinion, of the game. And in game three, remember, Isenbart got in all alone shorthanded and didn't score. That also could have been a problem. So the Leafs have to be aware of the Red Wings' ability to score when they're down a man. Yes, they can do that, for sure. And as you mentioned, Harry, they've proved it already in this series. In spades, the Leafs intercept the puck inside the line. Gilmore nearly got loose. It is fired out by Burr all the way down the ice. The time of that elbowing penalty was 8.02, so we're down to 11 minutes and 35 seconds left in the third period. 3-2 Leafs. Anderson poked it up for Gill. Gill is in on a sharp angle. No shot. It's Anderson again. Back to the net it goes. Gill was over there on the other side. Now Anderson from Gilmore. Center net. shot. Anderson again and Rachuk wrapped at it and missed it. And the Red Wings get it out by the two defensemen down the ice. Puck fan coming out as the Leafs were changing. So are the Red Wings. And Rachuk to Gilmore. His shot stopped by Shuttle Day. And the Red Wings fire down the ice again. 55 seconds left on this power play. Toronto. 3-2. to two. Leafs leading here in the third period. Game four. The count to center. Behind by Fedorov and couldn't get much on it as he tried to shoot it in. Up near center, this is Eisenbard. Eisenbard dropped it at the blue line. The Red Wings on the attack, even though they're shorthanded. Back to the line, it's tipped up. Here's the goal clock, but it's Coffey who speeds by everybody. He had uh, three strides to make up, and he made it up in a wink of an eye. What a great burst of speed by Coffey. Pearson, McCown, McCown, no shot. Colin Waits coming in, passes in there. Rouse lifted one high. Five seconds left in the penalty. The Red Wings have killed off another one. Puck in on the boards and five players looking for it. Clark is knocked down. Puck is back of the net. Here's Pearson, and he tried to jam it in. Eisenbart shoots it out and hit the linesman. And played back inside the Red Wing blue line. Red Wings are changing and they shoot it in. 9.35 left in the third. Clark missing the pass at center ice. Now he gets it again. Wendell Clark comes in there on the backhand. Off his stick and high. Clark giving chase, but the Red Wings come out with the puck. Shepard's pass to the left side. They get it in over the line. Powell moving up on the play, but here come the Leafs. Two on one. In the back of Wayne, the pass by Ellett. Into the skates of McElwain. McElwain centered it. Two leaps in the lead. Vanderbilt jabbed at it. Constantino on top of the other lead player in the crease area. And the linesman get in there to break it up. Polino and Primo. Vanderbilt gets up. Finally, he was under a pile. Now the Leafs had a great opportunity and never got the shot away as the puck came out from behind the net through two of them. And Konstantinov very upset at Vanderbilt for kind of 
trying to dig the puck out from underneath Chevalier. 9.09 to go. You cannot let your temper get in the way of the outcome of this game. At this point, Manderville, who's played not much but very well when he's played, there's what Konstantinov didn't like. Trying to dig the puck out. And here we have the pilot. When the wings were a man down, Coffey joins the rush. He went behind the net. Now, the ability to recover is a great tool for a defenseman. And look at this. Two strides, and he's in the clear as Wendell looked. Wendell Clark looked like he had a breakaway, but nobody on this earth or any other that I know of will catch Paul Coffey in an even race. He made that look easy as he got back and caught the two Leaf players who appeared to have a clear breakaway. And all of a sudden, the rocket appeared. And there he was. This is Primo ready for the face-off to the left of Chevalier. Wouldn't you like to just take one spin around the rink in the shoes of Paul Cobb? He just won, Bob, that's all. <laughs> could stay on the high speed. The wind, the wind would be lovely in your face. 9.09 left in this hockey game. Regulation time. 3-2 Toronto. Lefebvre from the blue line. Played it in back of the goal. Chevalier stepped out. Break is stopped. It is Lefebvre again. And fired back of the net. McElwain from the corner. Shoved the pass in back of the net. Vanderbilt centered it and hit the side of the goal. Primo was stopped. Detroit back. Shepard missed the pass near center. And the Leafs get it up there again. It is Vanderbilt. Comes over the line, but it is called on the offside. Eight minutes and 39 seconds left in the third period. Cars moving outside tonight in Toronto. We're inside. I'm Bob Cole with Harry Neal, and we're happy that you're inside and catching this game on Molson Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. It is 3 2 Toronto. A dandy playoff hockey game. 8 20 remaining in the third. Lidstrom shot. Putt back. Jacobet. It bounces loose in front of the net. Potvin had to come up with a stop on Kennedy. He looked shaky on that save and then couldn't find it. Now the Leafs get it out. Osborne coming in with Pearson on the rush. Clark on the play. And knocked down on the play was Pearson. Pearson chasing it now. Here's Bird tipping it to center ice. And Bird picks it up and shoots it in. McCown took his time with that one. To Rouse, back to McCown, out of his reach. Konstantinov will come back for Detroit. Leaves changing again with 7.45 remaining in the third. Kennedy, who has one of the Detroit goals, shot it in. Gill played it down the ice. Coffee winding up. Coffee comes up over the line, and he was caught this time by Gilmore. Anderson, or rather, Andrew Chuck gets loose to Anderson. Anderson on the back. Chuck tried to bank it in off the goaltender from behind. Gilmore for Andrew Chuck. Oh, God, he's dangerous from that angle. Sandler Anderson missed it, but there's going to be a penalty to Detroit. It was Fedorov who hit Anderson just as the pass came out to Anderson. Well, Andrew Chuck was behind the net, made a nice pass across to Anderson, and Anderson is going to draw a five-minute penalty here to Fedorov, so he must be injured. It was a high stick. Chris Broadhurst, the trainer, is going to give him a little treatment, 7.15 to go. And Anderson was hauled down in front of the net, and Fedorov, a real key player for the Detroit Red Wings, and the second one tonight to pick up a five and a game. Or is it Paul Coffey? I thought it was Fedorov. I think it was Fedorov who got the stick up, Harry. But we'll wait to get they, the official. They have Coffey on the board, but they could be mistaken. Yes, yeah, 77 Let's have is a look up on at the board. It here. Here's a great little pass. There's the hook right there. It's Fedorov. And 
there's no question about who it was. It was number 91. There's Fedorov in front with Anderson and hooks him right in the face as Anderson's trying to put the pass across in. And you can see Paul Stewart in the background had it called immediately. Fedorov leads, and that's the second uh, Detroit major tonight on a game, a misconduct penalty. High stick major in game. Sergei Fedorov, five minutes for high sticking and a game misconduct. Time 12:45. High sticking major. Chase on had one earlier in the second period. Quickly, let's go to Ron McLean. Okay, Ron now face off to the left of Chevalier. Toronto is leading three to two, and the time remaining in the third period 7:15. Another key Red Wing gets a major penalty and a game. Fedorov leaps now on a major power play. Five minutes. They pass it around. Gilmore whipped it in back of the net for Cullen. Cullen was late getting to it, and here's Helen pinching in. Helen shot it to the corner. The Red Wings trying to kill off another major. Andrew Chuck fell but made a play. Gilmore got it back to Gill. Gill shoveled it off to the other corner. Now it's the Red Wings who pick it up and get out. Iserman upended as he tried to skate in. He goes right on. 6.35 left in the third period. Ellett lost it in the skates of Putman. Shook him up a bit. Gilmore for Gill. Gill into Gilmore. Back in the net. Tough time controlling it. Stopped on the short side by Shovel Day. The Red Wings get it ahead. Eisenbach coming up to the Maple Leaf line and killing precious seconds. Now Gilmore was tripped with a stick and he's hurt. I think he was hit on the hand and is going off. Six minutes remaining in the third period. Amber Chuck to center. Puck is fired in. Here's Cecil on it. And that's called to the offside. 3.38 left in the major penalty to Fedorov. Gilmore has left the ice. He was injured. And I can tell you, Bob, the way he left the ice, the hurry he did it, and the way he held his hand, you have to think that he's got a real problem with his right hand. Let's have a look at it right here. Gilmore goes in to intercept the pass, and Mark Howe slashes him right across the left hand. And there he takes a look at it. Now the nail could be off, or the thumb could be broken and dislocated, but Gilmore was very upset when he looked at it and roared right to the relief dressing room. We'll get a report as soon as possible. 5.53, as you see, left to play in the third period. Toronto leading by a goal. They had the man advantage on a major penalty against the Red Wings. Federal. Shot by Drake, deflected high on the glass. on the rush. McCown hangs on to it. Feeds it into the corner behind the Detroit goal. Drake is there to pick it up and he'll bring it out. Three Red Wings skate out the center. Up over the leaf line is Lidstrom. Dump one in front of the net. Ellett stopped it. Three minutes left in the major penalty. The Leafs with a chance to put the game away here. But the Red Wings again playing a fine game shorthanded. They killed off a major earlier in the game. and in the crease area. One of the secrets to improve the possible success on a five-minute power play is to try to change your lines every minute. Don't think that you have to stay out there. there Pat Burns just got the news on Gilmore. I guarantee it. You saw him shake his head and wave his hand, so it must be a serious situation on Mark Howe's slash to the hand of Doug Gilmore. I was saying, five one minute shifts if you can get it. So you always have fresh people out there and you have to come off when you get the first opportunity. You can't wait for one more dash up the ice. 2.43 left in the penalty to Detroit. Toronto leads by a goal here in the late stages of the third period. Desperately needing another goal here. 
Anderson on the boards. Hustle it in to Cullen. Molina was bumped in front of the net by Eitreman. Leaps keep it in. That's Cullen back of the goal. Trying to center it. Oh, oh, lost no. it. The Red Wings' Eitreman fights off a check. And the Red Wings do bring it out. Konstantinov shot it down the ice. Konstantinov is dead. was the nearest Leaf player to Konstantinov, who seems to be in a fair amount of pain. Paul Stewart will check with Konstantinov and the linesman. If the linesman saw it, they can call it. Whoa! I think they could hear it and call that one. High sticking is the call. Gilmore, we're told, is back on the leaf bench. Here he is. Well, you gotta hope there's nothing seriously wrong there. It's his thumb, all right. And you can't tell from this angle. Certainly, it doesn't appear to be dislocated. Hopefully, it's his thumbnail. You know how sore that is. But at least you'll be all right to play. And now Anderson gets four minutes. Well, the call is two minutes or four if they think it was an accident and there's a bit of an injury and five if they figure it was a deliberate one. There doesn't appear to be any cut. But it's obvious that Konstantinov took one up under the mask. And now we have two minutes and 16 seconds in Fedorov's major and four minutes up on the board for Anderson's double minor with 4.31 to go in the third period. The Leafs are up by one. That go-ahead goal scored by Andrichuk at 4.47 from Gilmore and Anderson. Anderson is now in the penalty box. Two minor penalties. Gallant is serving the major penalty that was assessed Sergei Fedorov, and he'll be out in 2.16. Well, he got hit in the eye, and it's closing up quickly, as you can see. And Gilmore's back for the Leafs with uh, one good thumb we know anyway. So it's far from over, but good news for the Leafs with Gilmore returning. 4.30 left to play in the third period. Toronto 3, Detroit 2. Osborne dumped the puck in over the Red Wing line. Lidstrom pins him in on the boards. Leafs Gilmore on the ice and looking for it. And it gets by him. Out for Coffee. Coffee with a goal tonight. Moves up over the line and tried to set one up, but LeFave stopped it. Leafs get it. Osborne is coming out. The pass hit Iserman. Now it's driven in off the boards by LeFave and the Leafs change. 3.50 left in the third. Out for Lidstrom. He gets the leaf line and gives it to Shepard. Back to the line. Here's Coffee. Stop. Is all the way to center ice. Berg circles in his own zone. Coming to center with Zezel and he shoots it from center ice. Then Berg was hit by Iserman. Zezel in there, outnumbered by three Red Wings who come up with a puck and out. Racine skates to center ice. Racine shooting a high one in. Ellis going back against Primo. The puck bouncing high. Gill saw it. And he picks it up. it to Ellett, finally, and Ellett from center rolled it in over the Detroit line. Three minutes remaining in the third period. How around the net. The Red Wings come out. The Leafs are leading three to two. Over first. 
Racine gave Gilmore. Chevrolet left the stick there. There was an opening between his legs. He left the stick there, and then Racine just fired Gilmore into the end of the ring. 29 seconds from now, Detroit will go on a power play. Anderson has 2.13 remaining in his double minor. And there's the time remaining in the third period. 3-2 Toronto in game four. The Leafs trying to tie the series. The Red Wings look to take a stranglehold if they can win this one tonight. They won the first two at the Joe Louis Arena, where we shall be for game five. That's on Tuesday. Red Wings can't get out. Osborne gets in. Osborne. Shot by McCown. Was off the leg. Gilmore back in the net. He is out front now. Exactly remaining in the third. And here we go. Zazel winning another faceoff. And it's cleared out in front of the net. Zazel is there. And he shoots it down the ice. He has been a tower of strength defensively tonight for the Maple Leafs. Peter Zazel, number 25, 145, left to play in regulation time. The Red Wings led by Iserman getting the blue line. He lost it now. Net empty down there. Shovel down nearly got caught. He started up. Started back, now he's going back. One minute left in the power play for Detroit. Chevalier is starting out again. 125 left in the third period. There goes the goaltender. The Detroit net is empty. Rouse firing one. Coffee stopped it. It comes in front. Back to the line to Iserman. Iserman into the corner. The Red Wings pressuring now with the extra skaters on there. Two of them. Back to the line. Coffee might shoot it. Does. Potvin got a piece of it. Centered, Leafsburg can't get the puck out of We're in the final minute. Racine setting it up for Coffee. Here's Racine, high shot to the glass. Here's Coffee again, pass into the side of the net. Racine shot it in the crowd. 13 seconds left on the power play. 43.6 seconds remaining in regulation time. The Toronto Maple Leafs fighting for their lives here tonight at Maple Leaf Gardens. They are trying to tie the series, and they lead at this point 3-2. to two. Well, you got to get Jamie McCowan marks. On that hard point shot by Racine, he cleared out Probert and Iserman, which may well to see the point shot. It was a one-timer. Now watch in front of the net. There's McCowan. Down goes Probert. Or Iserman, and then Probert's out of there. Now if Iserman had been standing there, we know he might have tipped it, we know he might have screened it, and we think he might have got the rebound. And another octopus on rock. 
Parks here at Maple Leaf Gardens. A timeout has been called with 43.6 seconds remaining in regulation time. Detroit trying to tie it. They have another 13 seconds on a power play. Toronto leads by a goal, and we thank these people who are always there assisting us to get this show on the air for you. And we're happy that you could join us tonight for a terrific playoff hockey game at Maple Leaf Gardens. The Leafs battling back to take a 3-2 lead here in the third period on Andrew Chuck's second goal. The Red Wings winning the first two games, you'll recall, at the Joe Louis Arena in Detroit. And uh, these two games here at Toronto have been terrific. The Leafs won the first one here, game three, on Friday night, are leading by the skin of their teeth, three to two here in the fourth game on this Sunday night. And a reminder, Tuesday, game five will be on there again from the Joe Louis Arena in Detroit at 7.30 Eastern Daylight Time. We invite you to join us. 13 seconds left. Anderson will come out of the penalty box, but for that 13 seconds, it will be six skaters against four as the Detroit goaltender has been removed. They are Coffey, Cobra, Shepard, Eiserman, Cicerelli, and Lindstrom. Now, that's quite a sextet for the red and white machine. Let's see how the blue and white machine does against them. McCown lining up. Zazzle will take this important face-off. Rouse and Gilmore, the other two. Red Wings win at this time. Coffee along the line to Lidstrom. To Coffey, the shot up high into the crowd. Tip Anderson has six seconds remaining. And it'll come out over the blue line Paul for the face-off. Paul Stewart is saying that the Red Wing player touched it. And the Red Wings are adamant it was the Leaf player that touched it to deflect it out of the ring. If it's a Red Wing player, the face-off goes outside. Stewart isn't going to change his mind, but the Red Wings are very determined. And until we see the replay, we're not sure. But by the looks of Iserman, especially Iserman, who's not a whiner and a crier by any stretch of the imagination, he is convinced the Leaf player touched it, not the Red Wing player. And it is so important, Harry, the location of this face-off, because... Anderson's penalty is down to six seconds. We might see it here as it's shot from the blue line. It looked like it hit Bob Rouse number three and went out of the rink. And no wonder the Red Wings are upset. Now the Red Wing coach in the press box has seen the same replay and has called down to Brian Murray. They're gonna get nowhere, but let's have another look and see. Number three there, does he touch it? Yes, he does. With his hand or even his helmet. Six seconds left in Anderson's penalty. The faceoff ends up outside the blue line. 36 seconds remaining in regulation time. Zezel wins the draw this time. Tried to backhand it down the ice. He does. There'll be no icing on that one. Now Anderson is out of the penalty box. The Detroit net is empty. 24 seconds left. In the third period, the Leafs trying to hang on for a win here. Detroit will put out all the stops. And they get the puck in there. Here's a shot. And Potvin has it. Potvin has it. 11 seconds left. Oh, brother. <laughs> well, I don't know how Felix stopped it. It was a play that looked like the puck was going out of the Leafs zone. And then it deflected back to the front of the net, and the Red Wings got it and had Potvin at his mercy. Bob Probert has been a tower of power. Here's the play. It's three Red Wings, one Leaf, and how did Potvin see it? It hit his pad, then hit the post, and then he made the save on the rebound from Dino Cicerelli. You can see two Red Wing point men thought it went in. Well, well, well. 11.2 seconds remaining in the third period. And Probert and Osborne were doing a little pushing. Uh, let's see. 11.2 left. Toronto leading by a goal. The second of the night by Andrichuk is the margin right now. That was scored at 4.47 of this third period. There was no scoring in the first. 
They left the second tied at two. And the Enrichuk goal now is the big one on the board for the Toronto Maple Leafs. The face-off again, we talk about important face-offs. We've got a big one coming up again inside the Maple Leaf line to the right of Felix Putback. So you'll see Zezel on the ice. He's out there, and you'll see Eiserman for Detroit. These two will square off. Probably the biggest face-off of the night. Well, Eiserman beat Zezel on the last one, but Zezel has beaten Eiserman most times before the last one, but this is the only one that counts now. Don't forget, the Detroit man is empty. They have an extra skater on, and they get set for the face-off. Colbert out of position. They wait. Here we go. Inside the circle. Now we're ready to go. It comes over the line. Five seconds left. The Leafs are going to tie the series. And listen to this crowd. Riding on it. The Red Wings trying to take a two game lead in the series to go back home and wrap it up in five. And the Leafs, fighting for their lives, come up with two huge wins tonight. This one, three to two, and they'll get a big standing ovation now as they stayed off. Great game. A great game. Two out of three. The series is now. that they will not win it. Toronto and Detroit, all players played their hearts out. Toronto got a real break at the end, and here we go for number five, Tuesday night at Joe Louis Arena. Toronto wins the game three to two, and the series is tied two, two. Ladies and gentlemen, here are tonight's Molson three stars as selected by Hockey Night in Canada. The first star, Dave Andrachuk. The second star, Wendell Clark. And the third star, Bob Probert.